Whenever I started in crypto, I always wondered what the portfolio of the person that I was looking at actually looks like. Now that the tables have turned and I'm on this side of things now, I thought, you know, actually, let's serve that need and let's make a video about my portfolio. So I'm going to be sharing the percentage allocation across all of my investments so far uh, outside of my house to show you where things are spread and why there are some big surprises in here, I think, for people. Um, and why those things have occurred and you know how I'm going to be navigating those things in the future. So let's get into the first of them, right? Let's get into the little, the little slithers of the pie chart. And one of the slithers that you'll see here is Bitcoin. I also own a, a really, really insignificant amount of Ethereum, but these are just for whenever I need like the Ethereum network to, to send some to send a crypto or whatever, I need some fees, right? I need to be able to pay the fees for the ridiculous system that Ethereum is. Bitcoin is the same, but I've just got residual Bitcoin. Um, and so I just keep that, you know, locked away. I don't even think about that Bitcoin anymore. And so that's why it makes up such a small percentage. Let's get to the next slither. And that is actually silver. Silver is that next spot for me. And that's represented there in yellow. The reason I hold so much silver is because I hold silver Britannias and these are actual legal tender in the UK. I'm not actually sure about other ones. I hold one coin that is a Britannia from Canada and that was a wonderful gift. The same people who gifted me this uh, Houston <laughs> police force hat and so I've got 2.9% of my portfolio represented in silver purely because this is my hedge, a 2.9% hedge that the Great Reset's gonna happen, <laughs> right? So if the Great Reset happens, everything goes plummeting down. The banks don't let you withdraw any money. There's riots on the street. You know, people are starting to loot and everything. At the very least, I can use these silver coins as two pounds pieces, right? I can actually buy something for two pounds with my coin or I can sell it at its value of its material which is right now is like $30 or something and so its material value or its currency value would come into play at that point so there you go there it is all revealed I have a 3% confidence in the great reset happening the next slither is USDT and this USDT is in place for a very simple reason. If XRP returns back down to 36 cents, which is my personal anticipation, that's what the market's going to do. If it returns back to 36 cents, that 3% of USDT is then allocated into XRP. I have told myself I'm not buying any more XRP because I reached the, the limits that I wanted to reach, that I reached my goals. And I said, I, I'm distributing from that point on. I'm looking elsewhere for other opportunities. I'm not looking at XRP anymore. I've built my bags up. But the juicy opportunity at a market move down to 36 cents at this point in 2023, looking at it, you know, I've got 3% of my portfolio in USDT and it's all in buy orders ready for XRP to come down. And that really will be the end of my XRP endeavors in terms of buying. Um, because if 36 cents is reached, I think that level is reached right down there all summer and we slowly start to build back up for the new bull run at the end of the year. That's my kind of assessment from the whole thing. Typically prices move at the end of the year and they're not so good during the summer. So if I use that situation for this situation, that's what I'm looking at. And in that eventuality, that USDT is converted into XRP. The next jump up is pounds. In orange right there, I have 10.7% allocated in pounds. Now, how did I get all these pounds? And also, why are there some other assets that haven't been raised so far yet? And actually, quite truthfully, I took profits in XDC and XLM. These profits, I, I took a bit heavier than maybe people anticipated. I wasn't taking some off the top here or off the top there. I actually took all of my XLM and my XDC out of the equation. Not to say that that's profits taken permanently, absolutely not. Those GBPs are waiting again for that price movement to come down for XRP down to the 36 cent level. When 36 cents for XRP is reached, I'm buying my XLM and XDC back with that 10.7% allocation, ultimately creating even more XLM and XDC tokens in my possession. That's called accumulation. 
and, and I'll be back into the market with a more balanced portfolio between the three X tokens. You know, when I look at this move, when I look at my whole kind of year projection of how things are gonna go, maybe dying down slightly in the summer, but down at a lower level and then picking up once summer's done, you know, October, November, December. Um, if I look at that with that mentality, and I know that April, for example, is a really good month typically in crypto. And at the beginning of this year, we had a really, really decent rise for XLM and XDC. I just took all of that out, understanding that the summer's probably gonna be a bit died down and I'll be reinvesting down at those worst moments in the summer. I'm really kind of hedging my bets here on that long term view, especially of this year, how this year is going to go. And I'm really just positioning my assets accordingly. But the absolute plan here is to get back into XLM and XDC. But I'm just going to wait for some extra price movement to the downside to allocate those stable coins and fiat into those assets. Let's move into the next one. Everyone I know is completely looking at this now. XRP is probably his largest holding. He also doesn't have XDC and XLM. <laughs> so what is this big chunk of 17.5% on this pie chart? And interestingly, this is pre-IPO shares. You might be thinking, why, why have you got pre-IPO shares? I thought we were just all crypto here. This is an opportunity that I was given. I did mention this in my Discord channel to serious investors. And this was an opportunity to be involved in some pre-IPO PolySign without having to be an accredited investor. This is done by using a special product vehicle, which is called an SPV. And an SPV is essentially an entity that you can invest in or, or contribute funds to as a collectively, as a group of non-accredited investors, you invest in this SPV and the SPV buys the pre-IPO shares. And the company that I've kind of invested in to buy shares of is PolySign. So you'll know that I'm not operating really outside of crypto here, just looking at opportunities in the business world, in the traditional business world within crypto that I see massive potential in. I do see massive potential in the PolySign one. That's That whole thing is now closed and funds have been allocated. So this is the most up-to-date representation of my portfolio right now. And I did allocate a good chunk. There may have even been some profits from the XLM and XDC that went into this, as well as, there, I mean, my GBP was a lot more than that before all of this moving into PolySign. But essentially what you have here is me currently distributed in XRP, which is at 65.5%, that big blue chunk. I'm sure you all put that together. 65.5% in XRP, 17.5% in this pre-IPO PolySign, 10% in GBP, 3% in USDT, 2.9% in silver, and really tiny percentages in Bitcoin and there's some Ethereum in there as well for fees. Now, obviously I've given you my kind of plan for the stable coins and the fiat currency to, to re-enter back into those other X assets. I thought this might be enlightening to everyone to kind of see where I stand and everything. I would love to know on a percentage basis where you have allocated your funds and how you're distributed. So if you can, let me know in the comments. That'd be extremely valuable for us all to kind of compare how we're all distributing. And if you'd like me to go further into depth about diversification and risk tolerance and how that all plays along with each other, then I'd be more than happy to do so. And we can use my portfolio and reasoning to do that video. So also let me know in the comments if that's a video you want to watch. The next video that you should watch is the one that the algorithm thinks would be best for you. And that's the video right below me here. Don't leave without subscribing and clicking like. Stay emotionless and I'll see you in the next one.